Hi, I'm Sue Stuckwish, and I'm a principal with Global Economics. And today I'm going to talk about statistically valid samples. I want to share an actual case where I was the damages expert. And the case was a wage and hour case that involved allegations of unpaid overtime against a national retailer in the state of California. The allegations involved 100 stores all across the state of California, tens of thousands of sales associates, and tens of millions of lines of data. And much of the data was on microfiche buried in file cabinets in a back storage room at the defendant's uh, warehouse. So it became very clear early on that it was not gonna be efficient, it was not gonna be cost effective to actually analyze all the data to figure out how much unpaid overtime was actually involved. So the judge ordered one randomly selected store to be analyzed and to calculate the unpaid overtime just for that one store. We analyzed that one store and we found that there was $28,000 of unpaid overtime violations. Well, the plaintiffs decided, well, let's just multiply 100 times 28,000 to get the total damages for all 100 stores. And they came up with damages of 2.8 million. Makes sense. But the problem is this one store, this one store wasn't representative of all 100 stores in the entire population. So you have to start asking questions. Is this store typical of all 100 stores? Is store even the right sampling unit? And in this particular case, it turned out it was not. And so we developed a statistically valid sampling plan where we were able to analyze data that covered all 100 stores in a random selection of employee weeks of data in order to figure out the unpaid overtime across all 100 stores. So what resulted was a sample that was representative of the entire population. And the unpaid overtime for all 100 stores was approximately $300,000. So not 100 times 28,000 giving you 2.8 million, it was 300,000. And that was based on a statistically valid sample. Thank you for listening.